show like how much comes out with pads. So if you think you don't have to clean their feet out if they have pads on, you're very wrong. So this is how much still packs in there. So um, this guy had huge abscesses that blew out like huge portions of his feet. So we just put some on there because he had no sole protection at all after all said and done. So. How was she? How was he to shoe? This horse was phenomenal to shoe. Like we had my son running around with a wheelbarrow, making all sorts of noise, and he never had a fuss whatsoever. That's great. Now he has an old uh, injury on that back leg. Well, it's not really old. It's kind of fresh. Yeah, it's still healing. Uh, but the vet said that it was not anything long-lasting. It just needed time to scab over and heal. He's on a little different pad on this guy today. He's, he's still got a lot of filling out to do along his spine. So this is actually built up all along where the saddle sits. So just gives him a little extra cushion since... He's got a little weight to build on his top line. And I noticed that you're um, saddling from the opposite side. Um, so you're supposed to saddle from the left side and, and all that, but you also don't want a horse so used to it that they freak out if you do it on the other side. So like when you train, when we train colts and stuff like that, we make sure to get on on the opposite side, get off on the opposite side, because you'd be surprised if you never did that. And then for whatever reason you have to, and the horse is not used to it, they'll freak out. So you kind of want to be used to both sides, right lane, right brain, left brain, and you want to do everything kind of equal. So what kind of saddle are we using on Huckleberry Finn? Sometimes you just want to tie his rope saddles, and it's, uh, is this one a seven or a seven and a half? I think it's still a seven and a half, but it fits a little narrower horses better. So, this guy's, uh, looks like a thoroughbred. Haven't checked him for a lip tattoo. We're curious if he ran on the track just because of how used to chaos on the ground he is. Because racehorses get to see, you know, beer gardens and all sorts of stuff like that. And so he really doesn't seem bothered by much. So we're curious if he ran on the track. We haven't checked his lips yet. Uh, so, okay. So you just check his lips? Yeah, no lip tattoo. So he didn't run on the track. Doesn't mean he didn't pony on the track. So <laughs> he's like, yep, she just checked my lip. <laughs> he's like, you should have told me I'd shown you. There's nothing there. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Now I hear the cinch making a different kind of noise. So what kind of cinch is that? I think that's a smart cinch. So it's actually, uh, you go through and wrap your cinch up or wrap your latigo up and, and then there's a different a different spot you put the very last wrap through and it just has a roller on it. And some people think it makes it easier for adjusting. It just came with, uh, when we got, we wanted a specific cinch, and those just happen to be smart cinches. We were looking for the felt rope cinches, so. So, Atai's putting on a regular breast collar, not his normal tripping collar, and this one connects underneath the front legs. Yeah, we've got a mixture of both, and uh, some of these saddles, we just have uh, breast collar or tripping collars on them, and that's I've just the... i this one as well. Yeah, uh, that one might be one I won. Is it MS? Yeah, GC or that's one of the ones I won. Um, but anyway, it's... Uh, it's just preference. Tripping collars are uh, a lot of headers use them, team ropers, just because they're they're thick for logging cattle and breast collars seem to go across most disciplines. So, so let's talk about something real quick because a lot of people don't know this. When you go to unsaddle and what's the first thing you undo? Breast collar. So you want to do like the weakest connection when you're unsaddling. You want to do the weakest connection first and the strongest last. So if something happens. 
that saddle shouldn't come undone and end up underneath the horse and then the wreck gets worse. So when you're putting them on, it's the opposite. You want the strongest connection first. Yet again, if something happens, you know, the breast collar could be flailing all over the place, the back cinch, but those can break off if the saddle's, you know, not going to flip underneath of them and all that. So putting it on, you want the front cinch, then the back cinch, then the breast collar. Taking it off, you want the opposite. Take the breast collar off, then take the back cinch off, then the front cinch. Well, thank you, because a lot of people, they don't know that. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people, even more advanced horse people, uh, kind of do it in the wrong order. And, and sometimes people, if you haven't had experience with horses that'll, which they're an animal and it's going to happen, but people that break a lot of colts, they're green. There's stuff that's going to happen, stuff's going to spook them. So it's a little more on your mind if a horse is going to do something because colts don't know any better. So if you're always around something broke that'll stand there and not move, you don't really think about it. But it's just a safety thing. Because they are animals, they do have a mind of their own, and anything could happen. So you always want to do safety first. Well, thanks for telling them that. Yeah. So Wendy was asking, what had I braided this for today? And I just got this done. Um, so normally I have a leather piece that sits right here to where I can take my ropes on and off for a quick, you know, just where we go to ropings. You can set your rope here, hook it up, and it stay there for the day. When I'm getting on colts, I prefer to have a night latch. So that, you know, the rubber can break if you get in a bind, the leather piece can come off. But when you braid this rope, you put it on here a certain way. You know, and I, I have a horse take off and go to bucking, I can actually grab that and it'll stay there. Uh, this guy being thoroughbred, and like I said, he didn't run on the track, but um, well, he could be quarter horse, I don't know, he just looks more thoroughbred, but... Uh, we're just going to do a junior cow horse, which is one step up from a snaffle, and it's just a two to one purchase to shank ratio, which is two pounds of pressure for every one pound you put on it. Um, it's got a chain curb strap, so just in case if he's got no woe. And this is just a twisted wire double piece, or uh, two piece, and it's just pressure points. Uh, different mouthpieces are different pressure points. So this one is bar pressure, and then um, not a lot of tongue pressure, and then um, palate pressure, a little bit. So we'll see if this if he likes this at all. So Ty just yelled something about the longer the shank. What was he saying? The harder the bite. Um, so uh, we talked about two to one purchase to shank. So this is it's not, but let's say it's only an inch, and this is so this is double the length of this. So that's a two to one. So this is like a two to one. And so this is twice the length. So that gives you, like I, like I was saying before, two pounds of pressure for every one pound applied. So that's kind of when you're thinking about bits. And then another thing a lot of people, um, when you're gonna put a bit on, you can put the halter on, but I've had horses where if the halter's still tied up and you put it around their neck and you go to put a, a bit on and they pull back and that halter's around their neck, that could be a really bad wreck. So. If, if you have split reins or even uh, single reins, you get it around their neck and you have a hold of them. So in case they don't run off because they're not hooked up anymore, but you still have a hold of them. So uh, you never want to just take everything off. And, I mean, the horse could walk off, run off, and then you've got to run away. Um, could be out on the highway or whatever. And so. <laughs> that one open his mouth, but you see I get my finger in there and I just kind of tickle his tongue. <laughs> he doesn't want to open it. There we go. <laughs> that feels weird, right? You'd open your mouth if somebody was tickling your tongue. Yeah. He's like, not today, man. <laughs> You're funny, Huckleberry. Stood still for mounting. Here's forward. So you hear uh, you guys talking a lot to horses. You well, want to tell us why you do that? 
Uh, if you watch, they're always like, see how he'll cock one ear to him and then one ear forward? That's what you want your horse doing. You want your horse paying attention to you. And they really respond, you know, to talking to them. And, you know, you're talking to your dogs and I bet your horse understands just as much, if not more than what your dog does. So. Yeah, I personally, you know, when I start riding horses, I get nervous. And so I'd sing to the horses. And I've actually, I've, I've ponied race horses when I was a kid at the track in uh, Prineville, Oregon, and there was a jockey that would do that. If she had a nervous horse, she'd sing to it, and it seemed to really help. She had a really good reputation for being able to ride the nervous ones, and I noticed that she would sing certain songs to them, and I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, and they don't care if you're off-key or not. And horses are very, very social animals. They've done tons of studies where, I mean, they understand the full range of human emotions. They understand, they remember faces and um, actions. They get vibes off of you. And so you really gotta, you know, talk to them, let them know what's up and not expect them to read your mind. That was a nice turn. Yeah, he looks like he one rein stops, which is just, um, instead of stopping straight, you turn him into the fence and just change directions. Now looks... you and Ty both hold your reins differently then. So from each other or from other yeah people. so like he holds his reins a little bit differently than you do so yeah it's just preference arm length uh how you're built uh how you grew up what kind of stuff you rode it's just it ends up being preference but you definitely no matter what you want to have your hands soft and you want to have them low and then beyond that it's like i said dependent upon arm length and style and how you're built and Yeah, and, and, you know, you have to be ready for anything because with colts or with, you know, these horses, we don't know anything about them. So you have to kind of be like a cat and be relaxed but ready for anything, so. <laughs> Ty, was, when the, and the wind hits that banner, he looks at it, but he doesn't do anything bad. So that's a... Uh, a okay. testament to his temperament. It kind of poofs out at you like poof. <laughs> yeah, that's why we have them because it's really good for, for colts to get used to because if they go to a futurity or a rodeo later and they see a banner for the first time, that's not a great place to see it for the first time. Ends up being a pretty expensive mistake. <laughs> kind of like a sheet of flyboard going down the interstate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we try to get them used to. Too. Yeah. We try uh, to get our colts used to as much as possible and banners are something they're going to see in their career, so. <laughs> he seems to be pretty attentive to Ty. Like I said, he's he keeps rocking one ear back to him. He's listening to him while he's clucking at him. He's not sure if he's used to, you know, voice cues or if he wants him to put his legs into him. Because we don't know the training on these horses. We don't know what cues they were used to giving. So he's just testing out different things to see what the horse is used to without pushing him. He has a nice headset. Yeah, he's still paying attention. Um, still ear forward. Good boy. Ty just kind of asked him to slow down there to kind of see what he knows. Like we were saying, you know, he's a little better with a one-handed stop. He's not, he's not a, like, rain cow horse, stop horse. What he knows is, is definitely one rain stop and, or slow down into a stop. Not a full-on hard stop. So, so far that's what he knows about slowing him down. Okay. 
So even when he worked him in the round pen, he definitely prefers going to the left versus the right. So he's just asking him to go to the right now. And Well, and that's a normal trait of a horse that's been on a track. So he, left. even though he is uh, not tattooed, he could have still been used to do some amateur racing or ponying a, a racehorse. Yeah, I mean, he definitely could have been a pony horse because he's used to so much on the ground and he prefers left. Uh, yeah, he doesn't want to go to the right yet. Very much to the right, so he definitely could have been a pony horse on the track. Yeah, because watch when I change him going the other way. He'll pick it up a lot faster. So he easily ears forward, picks up a trot to the left. But when you go to pick it up to the right, he's like, we're going the wrong direction. So he's a little one-sided. Um, I could be wrong, but this horse probably ponied race horses on the track. Well, what about um, like a pickup horse for a rodeo? Um, usually those horses um, are gonna be a little catty and a little more rain broke. This guy, he he could be quarter horse. He could just be a thinner built quarter horse, but he looks like a thoroughbred. and. Uh, who knows when he got that scar on that back foot and on the track you can't run them with big scars so he could have got that and so then they didn't didn't race him and they're like oh okay we'll pony on him I mean who knows it's all conjecture it's all guess at this point well, at least he's not trying to be mean about it or anything he just doesn't know there he goes He's like, we're going the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, we're not supposed to go this way. Yeah, he wants to go left. Which way is right? <laughs> so he went, left. he did still prefer left to right. So I'm going to go ahead and go in the middle of the round pen and kind of help him move that way without uh, Ty having to push on him too hard. There he goes. So that's just something that you're doing to help a horse understand, right? Yeah, so instead of Ty getting after him, um, he round pinned fine. So we're just, okay, this is what we're asking of you. And he picked it right up. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> We're not sure how much training this horse has, which is why we're kind of like, if you're green here, let's add somebody in the middle of the round pen. But like I said, is, he's definitely, nothing phases him on the ground. We're just taking it cautious, seeing what he knows. boy. Luckily he's pretty smooth. Good boy. He transitions down okay so he doesn't have like a big like we said cow horse stop which wouldn't be expected with looking at him anyway but you know he kind of casually will come into the stop. Good boy. Go 
Oh boy. So I noticed I wanted to tell everybody real quick. You notice Ty does not stop and buy the gate. Yeah, so if you're working a horse in a round pen or an arena or anything like that, any place that, that you're going in and out, you definitely don't want to stop a horse there because they're, then they're gonna wanna always stop there and it's a bad habit and it can get dangerous. So uh, to an extreme, a horse will try to flat just go through the gate. And I've seen it plenty of times. So you definitely wanna always stop them where you wanna stop, change it up so that they're always listening to you, not trying to do it on their own. Right. So Sierra was just leading him out because she wasn't quite sure if he'd be able to go out. So that's a, a safety precaution, right? Yeah, he he definitely wants to go and he doesn't have a lot of breaks yet, but he def he's not trying to be mean at all. We just don't know what he knows. So we were just playing it safe, being cautious. He looks like more at his element out here. Yeah, he looks like he's wanting to be pretty good. Ears forward, good attitude about it. I would just, I, I would work on adding a little more brakes. He's not a runaway by any means. He just doesn't really, he's used to a one rein stop versus just flat stopping, so. Yeah, an amateur might have had him too, you know. He stopped real nice there when he asked him. He wants to be good. I would say just a little bit more training. He'd be a good horse or someone. Yeah. He looks like he wants to have a nice headset too, so that's always a plus. Yeah, I noticed that too when he was, he's gotten his nose tucked in, which is good. Doesn't look like a giraffe. And the fact that this horse absolutely was still a saint doing his shoes while kids were running around and it was utter chaos, is the, that says a lot for a horse. <laughs> yeah. He's put on a lot of good weight too. He's looking good. Yeah. Yeah, he's like real mellow, huh? Super relaxed. He might like it better out here than in the round pen. Well, so. and, you know, if he was on the track, track horses like that is like a, a they're called uh, stables or where they tack them up. So when they come in and they pick them up and then they lead them out to yeah. the track. Yeah. He could, you know. Oh, yeah. But he looks, he, he looks a lot better that way. Paddock. There yeah. you go. He seems more relaxed out here going around, so. And he definitely, uh, this two-piece twisted wire seems like it's a pretty decent bit for him, at least to start out with. With more training, you know, you can get to where you can back him up. Yeah, he's not real familiar with backing up. He wants to tuck his nose, though, so that is a great start. So, so the other thing is, is when Sierra steps into him and just clucks to him. Back up. <laughs> there, good boy. Yeah. 